Hey guys, I want to apologize for not uploading as much recently. There hasn't really been any big changes with the full self-driving beta since we got the uh, last update months ago and everyone is just waiting on version 9 to release which is supposedly going to be a giant improvement over the current version. This update has been pushed back a few times but now it really does seem like it will be here any day now and in accordance with Murphy's Law that day will be exactly when I leave for my two week vacation which is coming very soon. So I might be a little late to the party with the FSD Beta 9 videos, sorry. But today I'd like to take a closer look at the approach Tesla is taking to solving the full self-driving problem by only using the eight cameras in combination with neural networks to drive the car. In the current version, my car is still using the radar as well, uh, but with the next update, it will drop the radar altogether and rely on just cameras and improving the neural networks with software updates. I've seen quite a few people with criticisms about this approach, saying that additional sensors will be needed and that the cameras can't see what they need to in harder situations because of the placement. So let's dig a little deeper into this subject and I'll try to explain my perspective about all this stuff. Keep in mind, everything you're about to hear is just my opinion and should be taken with a giant grain of salt because I really have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't work in a field related to self-driving cars in any way, I am just a user of the technology sharing my perspective. Anyways, let's dive in. I think answering the question about whether Tesla's approach will work or not is largely defined what you specifically think full self-driving actually means. Does full self-driving mean the car can drive in absolutely every situation a human is able to right now? If it can drive on, let's say, 95% of the roads that humans are able to, but completely avoids the most difficult 5%, is that full self-driving still, even though there would be potentially unreachable destinations? If these cars are out on the road and getting into preventable crashes every million miles or so, which means statistically with how many Teslas that are out there, we'd be seeing quite a few full self-driving accidents on the headline news pretty regularly, is that full self-driving, and would you trust it to shuttle you around when you're in the back seat? I'm willing to bet there's a lot of people saying no, absolutely not. I think a lot of people's idea of when the car actually becomes full self-driving is when it starts to become a better driver than you. But there's a huge problem with that, because the vast majority of you think you're above average drivers, which statistically speaking just can't be the case. The example I gave earlier about the full self-driving cars getting into an accident every million miles or so would mean that they would actually be more than twice as safe as the average driver in the United States, according to statistics from the NHTSA. Let me tell you guys, things are going to get weird real soon. And for fun, let's take a look at where full self-driving cars are today by taking a look at a poll I posted for fun, which almost 2,000 of you took part in. Imagine you're on the freeway going 75 miles an hour. You see a car approaching from behind you in your rearview mirror. Which of these options would you feel most comfortable with? Or the least uncomfortable, I should say. Would it be a highway patrol? An aggressive driver swerving through traffic? A distracted driver putting on makeup or texting? Or a Tesla with the driver asleep at the wheel? Although these results might be a tad biased because it was asked on a YouTube channel about self-driving cars, the Tesla with the driver asleep won by a long shot. I actually don't think that specific result is particularly interesting though. I think what's actually really interesting about this poll is that distracted drivers were by far what people felt most uncomfortable with in this situation. And yet, any time I'm on the highway looking around at people, the majority of the people I see are very distracted. It's an odd place we're in. Everyone thinks they're an above average driver, so they can just use their phone for a second or pay attention to something else momentarily. But in reality, they're crashing at a pretty consistent rate year to year. I think it's important to point out that even right now on today's software update, People feel way safer with a Tesla behind them, with a driver asleep at the wheel, compared to somebody who is distracted. I think that says a lot. If there's a black Tesla and the driver's sleeping, 
A 911 caller reported that the driver of a Tesla was asleep as the car was traveling over 80 miles an hour. I mean, he's not erratic, you know. He's totally in the car seat. It's just that I looked over and he found asleep. Like I said, we're at a pretty interesting point of history for full self-driving cars right now. I feel like there's also a lot of people saying uh, full self-driving is just a gimmick that they'd never use because they themselves are a much better driver uh, and are just viewing it through that perspective. Uh, but even if that was true, which statistically speaking, it's not, um, full self-driving cars, however you want to define that, are going to change people's lives for the better. It doesn't even need to get to the point where they're a hundred times better than a human driver to provide a huge amount of value. There's a ton of people in this world who have lost their ability to drive for a variety of reasons, and a self-driving car would completely change their lives. I guess we should start talking about the hardware at some point, since that is the title of the video and all. So let's go ahead and get into it. First off, us humans drive cars with neural networks and vision only, being your brain and your eyes. Radar is not included, so the approach is definitely possible. But some argue that the placement of the cameras, specifically the B-pillar cameras, are at a bad angle when doing more complicated maneuvers like a blind, unprotected left turn. And to that, I say, I actually agree. Blind corners aren't comfortable for anyone, and Tesla's cameras aren't in an ideal spot for seeing past these areas because they are mounted in about the same spot as a driver would be able to see, except a few inches further back. But I don't think that is a deal breaker for making the cars full self-driving by any stretch. Let's take a look at another car. Man, that is a very large distance from the driver to the front of the car. Taking blind corners in this car must be very difficult and is indeed much more difficult than other cars. And yet, I'm fairly certain this car is capable of driving around on public roads with a human behind the wheel. But let's say you don't think that answer is good enough, and you think if Teslas can't make these unprotected turns and have better visibility than a human, then it will never work. Well, I'd still argue that this is solvable by software. They could take the approach of other self-driving car companies uh, are taking and reroute your drive so that it doesn't even attempt to go through these blind, unprotected turns and instead make a series of right turns to avoid them. Although this may sometimes add a little extra time to the trip, something pretty magical happens when you do this. Not only does the car avoid the most dangerous parts of the road where the most serious accidents happen, but if the car steers to the right a bit during creeping, you actually now have a view of approaching traffic from the repeater cameras on the front of the car, which have a huge advantage of visibility compared to a human driver. Tesla's full self-driving beta software currently does not do this. The car attempts to drive anywhere you want it to and basically routes the fastest way possible, um, which I think is really good for data collection. But I think if they could get the FSD beta driving to the point where it's only as good as the average human driver and then release a software update on top of that that only makes it avoid the most dangerous intersections and maneuvers, it would instantly become an order of magnitude better than a human driver. And I do think the current hardware is very capable of being at least as good as the average human. I know I got a bit off subject, uh, hopefully this video made you think about where we are and where we're going with full self-driving cars. It is a really, really interesting time. I don't think they have to be perfect to be a giant benefit for everyone on the road. And trust me, I'll be uploading a lot more videos once I can edit them in the back seat on the way to work. Thank you so much for watching, you guys, and I'll see you when I'm back from vacation with some Beta 9 videos. <laughs> I'm like unreasonably excited for this update. Oh, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the other channel. Okay, bye.